When I first saw the Bradley Beal trade, I was confused what Phoenix was doing. When I second saw the Bradley Beal trade, after the inclusion of four pick swaps and six second round picks, I was really confused what was going on in Phoenix. But as we stand here a few days into free agency, the Suns have used their limited assets very well and have made very many solid role player pickups for their big three. While I think an Aiton trade would improve Phoenix, possibly something along the lines of Tim Hardaway Jr., Rashawn Holmes, and JaVel McGee, which was rumored to be offered by Dallas, I no longer view it as a complete necessity. While I don't agree with some of the moves the Suns have made, James Jones and their front office have done a masterful job with very limited assets. <coughs> Maury. <coughs> And I think the Suns will surprise a whole lot of people this season. There are many reasons why I think they will improve, so let's get into it. First off, not only do in-season trades take a minute to build chemistry, but on top of that, KD got injured preparing for his first Phoenix home game, meaning that he and Devin Booker only played eight games together before this year's playoffs. While Booker was on an absolute tear, I think this and injuries did impact KD and the rest of Phoenix last postseason. I think after a full offseason and season of working not only together, but also with new star teammate Bradley Beal, the Suns could be looking very scary coming next postseason. Now I want to kind of discuss that Devin Booker playoff run because man, I know we weren't all in the moment, but I feel like it kind of got lost in the sauce as the season wrapped up. I mean, obviously, you know, no one's really going to be talking about a team that got bounced in the second round too much when we get to the NBA finals, you know, unless it's Philadelphia, but we won't talk about that today. But Devin Booker this postseason averaged 34, 5, and 7 on ridiculous efficiency, shooting nearly 60% from the field and over 50% from deep. If he can even sniff replicating this while KD and Bradley Beal do their jobs, Phoenix will have a real, real shot at it. Before I get into the Sun signings this free agency, I want to talk about the Bradley Beal trade for a second. While I personally don't completely agree with the deal, I think it will turn out better than most of us think. The Phoenix Suns traded Chris Paul and Landry Shamit along with four first round pick swaps and six second round picks for Bradley Beal, Isaiah Todd, and Jordan Goodwin. Everyone was a bit confused on the return until the swaps and seconds were added, but in all honesty, I'm not so sure they needed to add all of that. I think they could have gotten away with a few swaps while potentially retaining at least one of their 2028 or 2030 swaps to potentially have his leverage in an eight and trade, but hey, the Suns wanted their big three and well, they got it. There's this widespread belief that goes around about Bradley Beal not being the same guy he was due to his scoring dip. And while this is partially true, his improvement as a playmaker will be much more valuable to the Suns roster right now. They don't need him to go out there and get 30 a night when he's playing alongside Devin Booker and KD. But now to get on to why I really, really decided to make this video, which is the Suns great quality bench moves in free agency. My main concern with the Bradley Beal trade was that if you're not going to move Aiton, or even if you do, how do you create a quality bench? And well, James Jones and the Suns front office have answered that question. From signing all-around wing play in Eric Gordon to straight-up snipers in Yuta Watanabe and Keita Bates-Diop, to quality big man in Drew Eubanks and Chimeze Metu, the Suns have covered all bases for their bench unit. They did also retain Josh Okoge and Damian Lee, and still have campaign to run point off the bench. I think a DeAndre Ayton trade that nets the Suns a quality big and one to two other playable guys could be the only thing that takes this Sun squad to a new level, but if they don't feel like they can get the value they'd like back, I can somewhat understand not wanting to trade your 24 year old former number one overall pick, especially considering the possibility that he could be revitalized defensively under new defensive minded coach Frank Vogel. To wrap this up, I think the Suns have done nearly everything in their power to fill out the bench around their big three. My only remaining concern with this team is bench scoring, but if Frank Vogel is smart enough to realize that the beauty of having Bradley Beal, Devin Booker, and Kevin Durant is that you can sagger them and pretty much keep at least one of them on the court at all times. This won't really be much of a concern. Also, when you remove Chris Paul and essentially replace him with playmaking by committee from Booker, KD, and Beal, the offense will look a lot different. This may result in some growing pains and awkwardness early on, but could potentially result in a potentially beautiful free-flowing offense in the end. Suns fans, your front office may not be correct always, but you have done an outstanding job considering the circumstances and will definitely be a contender next year. Again, I understand everyone's want to like, oh, like, let's clown the Suns, blah, blah, blah. Like, it's fun. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, like they fall apart in, you know, elimination games, blah, blah, blah. Like, it's fun to do. But man, I, I think the Suns really did make some quality signings in free agency with, you know, pretty much next to nothing, you know, uh, in assets. So... I mean, hey man, again, I think, you know, an Aiton trade would really, really take this team to the next level, but even if they don't do it and Aiton comes back, you know, feeling different, feeling the disrespect, 
you know, m- maybe playing a little bit of a different game. I mean, obviously, he's going to have to play a bit of a different game. Obviously, you know, with KD, he, again, he also only got to play eight games with KD. You know, it's not just Booker. It's literally the whole team. And, you know, again, I, I think that's the major part that people are missing here. People are like, oh, well, well, Booker and KD lost to Jokic, so they must, you know, never be able to beat him, right? Like, that's definitely how that works. But, you know, I think, again, if, if, this, if they can make it, you know, again, I think a... You know, I mean, I don't know if it would include Rashawn Holmes and JaVale McGee anymore. Maybe replace JaVale McGee with the Reggie Bullock now because these sons did pick up Drew Eubanks and Chemeze Metu. But still, man, hey, a Tim Hardaway Jr., Rashawn Holmes, Reggie Bullock package, I think could really, really take this team to the next level. I'm not going to lie because they really just need solid big play. Like, Aiton will be nice to have, but he's not really needed when you have those three elite, elite scorers. But I do think the Suns, you know, again, I don't know. Like, I, I've kind of gotten different vibes from Suns fans. I've kind of gotten, like, all, like, down in the dumps. Like, we just traded everything for KD and we're never going to win anything and blah, blah, blah. I don't know, man. Uh, I think the Suns could be crazy. Booker last playoffs was just so ridiculous. And I'm like, bro, he might, like, KD, I mean, KD was the second best player last playoffs. And, you know, you might not even need him to be the best player. Which is, uh, you know, again, like, you know, I mean, if you can't win with KD as your second best player and Bradley Beal as your third then that's really, really unfortunate. But again, man, like I said, I think the role players, you know, again, the Suns did all they could really. I mean, you know, I, you know, they weren't going out making any major signings, but they did spread out their money in a really good way and picked up a bunch of quality bench guys to play around their big three. But that's going to wrap this one up. If y'all enjoyed it, please like it up and sub the channel. It would help me out a ton. Also, comment video ideas down below. You know what I mean? I'm always listening. I think my next video right now is going to be on the Indiana Pacers. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm excited with what they got going on over there. You know, Obi Toppin and uh, and Bruce Brown and all that. I think they're going to be really tough. But, you know, if there's any teams, any situations you want me to make a vid on, at some point I will make a vid on the Dame and Harden situations because, honestly, I think they're both going to stall for a really long time. Um, you know, I, I you know this whole Dame stuff about, oh, they are going to trade in Miami, but no, now they're not because they want a star return. I don't know, man. There, there's a whole lot of nuance and stuff going on in both of those situations, and that's kind of what the league is watching right now, you know what I mean? I mean, I don't really know what else is, you know, again, like, right, like, like we have some solid role player free agents still available, some stuff still going on, but for the most part, the dust has settled, and I think teams are really waiting for that damn domino to fall to start making moves again, but that's gonna wrap this one up. If y'all could like it up and sub the channel and turn on those post noties, I would really, really appreciate it, and yeah, I'm out. Peace.